Welcome everyone to another exciting episode of Everything Zen, your home to all things Zenoscope. So we cover everything from Cinderella and the Queen of Hearts, to Robin Hood as she investigates the mysterious madness in Manhattan, Black Knight and her return to Camelot, and so much more. Everything Zen is your Everything Zenoscope podcast. I'm your host, Mark Sells, and we've got a great set of shows for you here in April as we navigate springtime, April showers, and really get into the thick of it when it comes to comic book conventions from Calgary to fan expos in Philadelphia, Dallas, St. Louis, and Denver, to San Diego, Boston, Chicago, Montreal, all the way to New York in October. It's a great way to connect with artists and comic book lovers all around the world. Zenoscope will be at a handful of them. For our full schedule, visit Zenoscope.com and go to Community, Conventions, and Live Streams for our 2023 convention schedule. Our featured guest on this edition of Everything Zen may not be at a comic book convention this year because he is in high demand and also resides in Uaskuva, Finland. So we've decided to go globetrotting and bring him to you. Igor Lomov is one of the world's shining new talents in the field of digital art, capturing the glow of mermaids, vampires, fairies, cyberpunk, and Blade Runner-inspired scenes, and even renditions of Ellen Ripley and Sarah Connor. And in the Xenoscope world, you've seen his incredible illustrations on Robin Hood, Shadows of the Past, Oz, Return of the Wicked Witch, Bell, Labyrinth, and even on this very podcast, his cover of Liesel from Van Helsing, Bloodborne. To learn more about his process for creating covers, his collaborations with Zenoscope, his thoughts on traditional versus digital media, artificial intelligence, and lots more, Igor Lomov joins us right now on Everything Zen. Today, we are happy to be joined by the talented Zenoscope digital artist, illustrator, and designer, Igor Lomov. Igor, welcome to Everything Zen. Uh, thank you. Nice to be here. Obviously, we're connecting today from two completely different time zones all around the world. Tell me a little bit about where you're from, where you grew up, and when this idea of being a comic book artist first popped into your head. Yeah, I'm from Russia. Right now I'm living in uh, Finland and uh, I uh, went to Finland about uh, four years ago. Yeah, I'm also sorry for my English. My English not very good, but I hope it's fine. <laughs> It sounds great to me. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, when I was a kid, I really like a draw. And uh, after school, I decided to go in uh, art university. And um, after university, I start working as a designer. And um, uh, for me, design was good, but uh, my heart was always with art, and I choose digital art uh, from very beginning be because when I first time saw a, a computer in computer class in the school, I was a little kid and I was so impressed. It was like a magic for me, and I. Uh, because in my family we haven't uh, we have a computer but my friends has and i was really happy he was not, don't mind uh, to give me a couple of hours every day to draw in his computer and what was great i really <laughs> appreciate this <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's that's what friends are for right yeah, this is cool. Yeah. Were you an avid comic book reader as a kid? Did you read a lot of comics? Do you read a lot of comics now? I saw in library when I was really a little kid, a lot of comics. And yeah, I 
read this. Uh, also, I was a fan of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Batman, <laughs> stuff like this. Yeah. Um, right now, I I think comics books it's super cool entertainment uh, super cool media uh, uh i like zinescope comic a lot yeah uh also right now i'm reading uh watchman graphic novel that's this this is very nice too i i guess yeah. it's super cool it's not just nice <laughs> yeah yeah throughout your career it did you have um, artistic influences? Was there a particular artist or artist that really got your attention? And, you know, you looked at as, you know, I want to be like that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess so. A lot of artists inspired me. Um, I guess everyone familiar, uh, Ilya Kuvshinov, it's very famous Russian uh russian artist but i'm i'm not sure he's a comic artist but he's a digital artist mm. yeah and he, he really inspired me and also i i like uh, vlop maybe i'm spell uh, i pronounce it wrong but it's very very cool uh artist i find in instagram and uh, also Loish, maybe you he heard her name, um, and in Instagram and uh, on ArtStation, I follow a lot of super talented artists. And also, uh, right now, because uh, I draw in uh, comic covers, I also follow in a lot of comics artists, but I don't remember. Uh, all of the name but all of them super cool yeah do you, do you follow any zenoscope artists yes i follow uh, zenoscope artists um, uh, unfortunately i don't remember the names but i really like the uh, artworks so here's a tough question for you how would you describe your art to comic book fans how is your art different from others hmm it's an interesting question i i'm focusing on uh color decision a lot and light should the light decision to maybe this this is a little bit different what i see from other artists you hit on something i think very specific about about color because we're featuring your Van Helsing on this edition of Everything Zen, but Robin Hood, Shadows of the Past is probably one of my favorite covers you, you've done for Zenoscope thus far. Um, I love everything about it. Um, the composition and specifically the juxtaposition of color, that look she gives us with the moon sort of accenting and showing off the texture in her hood. It's really brilliant. Do you have a favorite cover you've done so far or one that you are most proud of? I really like Sky. Uh, you know, the character in the forest with the sword and magic. Yeah. Pink, pink color magic. I, I like a lot how, how I catch this mood, I guess, uh, coloring and shadow light here. I really like how how I catch this young. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Mental health affects so many variables in our day-to-day -day lives. How we think, how we feel, and how we act. And it's important at every stage of life, from childhood through adulthood. Fortunately, to help us navigate all those waters and improve our emotional, psychological, and social well-being, there's better help. It's all one word. That's better, H-E-L-P. At BetterHelp, you can tap into a network of over 25,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues, and it's 100% online. You just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy, 
That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then, you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. And the best part, you can message your therapist at any time. Schedule live sessions when it's most convenient for you. And if your therapist isn't the right fit for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom-picked just for you. More scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. Visit BetterHelp.com forward slash Zenoscope for 10% off your first month of therapy. With BetterHelp, get matched with a therapist who will listen and help you today. So how did you connect uh, with Zenoscope and start making covers for us? Oh, I guess it's a very regular story. Uh, one of a uh, member from Gen- Zeniscope just contact me and we start work together. <laughs> Nothing special. <laughs> Has your style of art changed over time? I hope so. My style changing changing in a good way, but I see how it's changed. Uh, from very beginning, I start drawing a little bit more cartoonish character. But right now, I still want to draw a stylization in a cartoonish way, but not such a, um, such a cartoonish, you know, because my first work was uh, inspired more from anime or uh, Disney cartoons or stuff like this. But right now, I, I hope I find something my in my style and I want to develop on this direction more and more. And yeah, I also start using a lot of uh, different brushes, different texture, different uh, everything because um, I work in more and I learn in more and I use computer as a tool, not as a you know, a uh, picture generator and right. every tool, tool I learn more and more. It's now part of my style, I hope. What is your relationship like with Zenoscope? Specifically, how much influence do you have in the final product, the layout, the colors, the character, the background? Yeah, uh, I guess one cover... For me, I work in on one color cover about twenty maybe hours. I, I'm not sure, but I when I start, I um, I thinking about ideas and sketches about hours, maybe a couple of hours. It's most important stuff on on that and. If I decide something wrong in the very beginning, that's mean in the end, this is, will be a problem for me. And yeah, I try to focus in on sketch as much as possible. Yeah. You know, when I finish the sketch, I already see the finished work. Uh, it's depends only how, how much time after uh, from the sketch and to the finished work I spent and you know in in my imagination I always see the result Mm. on 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 sketch you know and the (laughs) saddest uh, for me it's very sad when I create few sketches and I need to draw only once, (laughs) only one, (laughs) and uh, I see few not bad work, but I (laughs) I should do only one. (laughs) Right, you have to you have to let the others go. When you finish a piece, you know I've talked to a lot of artists, and 
the common saying, an artist's work is never done. Do you feel that way when you see one of your covers published? Do you see flaws in it or think, oh, I wish I had more time. I could have done this better. As an artist, you're working on deadlines. And so you don't have the luxury of having you know, years to kind of perfect something. Do you see imperfections in your work or things that you would tweak after the fact? Um, I don't, not, don't think so. I see imperfection, but sometime after a year, maybe I can just come back and look at the same work and I maybe I can decide maybe I can draw this area different way but every time when I draw a covers I never uh, show my uh, finished result if I'm not sure I'm, I'm done with it because when when I draw I I always always feel this moment when I see yeah that's it work is done I don't want to add anything everything in the correct place and in correct incorrect uh, I don't know uh, everything is ready right now and I don't want to add anything more because if work is done it's for me it's I just feel it you know it, it's not like I drop it because I'm tired or I don't want to uh, spend more time no I I always want to finish this work in, for real because I, I don't want to lie to myself or I just throw I just uh, finish something without you know in in, in not good condition or i don't want to send unfinished unfinished cover my my works always uh, for me looks done for 100 percent. even if i uh, can find something i disagree right now something i did a year ago it, it still look like a finished artwork That's for me yeah, that's, that's really good. That's really good. Not a lot of artists can do that, you know. I can I can tell you, for example, I redraw faces about three times before I really catch the real character um, emotion I want to show. Mm. You know, yeah. I, for me, I can stop for, from first uh, try, right? But I see I can do better and I do something to make it better. And even if I still see, okay, right now it's look good, but I still can do better. I, I will do that. Yeah. Cinderella, Snow White, Red Riding Hood, Sky Mathers. What do they all have in common? They're some of the most popular fairy tales around. And at Zenoscope, we're celebrating fairy tales this month with a fairy tale virtual con. Friday, April 21st from 1 to 4.45 p.m. And Saturday, April 22nd from 2 to 5.45 p.m. All times Eastern. Ralph, Jason, Casey, and Noah will have exclusive collectibles, interviews, games, giveaways, and more. And all with a special fairy tale theme. That's Friday and Saturday, April 21st and 22nd. Tell Siri to add it to your calendar right now. This month, it's love, loss, lost love, lost heads, and a lot of other lost things, including our serial killer princess's sanity. Cinderella goes up against the Queen of Hearts in the first of a brand new storyline. You want more heart? Carrie's is back in Grim Tales of Terror, Heart's Desire this month, a twisted tale about a piece of artwork that reveals a person's deepest desires. They could be good, but most likely, well, most definitely, something a whole lot worse. Also releasing this month, Grim Fairy Tales issue number 71 
which has Sky and her team at Arcane Acre attempting to save humanity from the chaos brought about by the return of He Who Shall Not Be Named. You know who I'm talking about. Don't miss a single story as new releases drop every Wednesday on Zenoscope.com. You know, the first rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. Second rule of Fight Club is you do not talk about Fight Club. So what are Ralph, Brian, Marilyn, Casey, Noah, and the gang going to do on Thursday, April 27th? Of course, they're going to talk about Fight Club, our April Movie Club movie of the month. So get your boxing gloves out, hop on YouTube to learn how to make soap like Brad Pitt and Ed Norton. Don't forget a cup of Starbucks coffee. Why? Well, David Fincher has stated that there's at least one Starbucks cup in every single shot in Fight Club. Will soap or coffee make it into Sun Kumanaki's Movie Club collectibles? You'll have to wait and see. Thursday, April 27th, live on Facebook and YouTube. And lastly, Easter may have come and gone, but the Zenoscope Easter egg hunt continues here in April, as every order receives a scratch-off ticket with some incredible prizes, including one grand prize winner who will receive a 2023 Philadelphia VIP event package. No purchase is necessary, and only one free entry will be awarded per household. That's the Zenoscope Easter Egg Hunt, where every scratch-off ticket is a winner. Can you talk to me a little bit about your daily routine? Like, how often do you draw? How many hours per day? What do you do to take a break and escape from work? Yeah, right now I'm uh, employed uh, a full day. And uh, also I draw in uh, for, for Zenoscope and I draw in about eight and or nine hours every day. Uh, when I start, just start my um, artwork way, I draw in about 20 hours, maybe 10 or 11 hours. I'm sorry, 20, it, it was a mistake. 10 or 11 hours every day. Yeah, but that was too much, too much. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. know that. The only way to learn something is repeat it uh, one million times. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but right now, uh, for take a break and rest, I visit in gym. I walk in and uh, riding bicycle, watching movie, playing a game. Yeah, I I and, I, and hopefully you you get something to eat, right? Of course, of course, sometimes <laughs> it's important. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, artificial intelligence has been all over the headlines as of late. What are your thoughts on AI and computer assisted or created artwork? Yeah, this is a complex question, not very easy. Uh, for me, because my opinion always changes about this technology. Before it's just start, I thinking, hmm, it looks like something unfair here happening. But if AI uh, learning he, uh, his you know, way to drawing um, by using base database. Uh, for example, if artists in some kind of resource set, yes, we agree to learn AI and they signed or click this on the site. I'm agree about this way to using AI in art, but if AI just use someone's art and copying this i guess it's not fair from a for artist who did original work maybe right 
not 100% fear. But this is very powerful tool. I hope if, uh, very soon we find a solution how to use it in the right way and how it will work for everyone. Because if uh, uh, if someone made a real original good art and AI without his permission just copied that, I disagree. It's not not good. It's not good. Yeah. What work do you have coming up that you're most excited about? Inside or out of Zenoscope, what are you currently working on? Yeah, uh, right now I'm working in the uh, game industry uh, and as an artist. And uh, unfortunately, I can't uh, tell you more about this. All of, all of this project I'm working on. Um, but maybe after a few years, we, we can show everything. But yeah. I can tell you about Zinescope, uh, what I'm working right now. It's um, a character. Uh, her name is Sela. Uh, I believe she's um, based on Snow, Snow White's look. Uh, this is very curious and powerful character, and I draw right now very dynamic pose how this character fights in the forest against uh, uh, the crumbling castle. I hope that will be not that very soon. Yeah. We show it. Well, Igor, thank you so much for connecting with us today, and of course all the amazing art that you've done and continue to do for us. We are so grateful to have you in the Zenoscope family. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. If you'd like to see more of Igor Lomov's work, follow him on Instagram. His handle is B-L-I-K underscore 47. That's B as in boy. L as in Larry, I as in independent, K as in kangaroo, underscore four seven. He's also on artstation.com under the same moniker. And of course, you can do a search on Igor Lomov on zenoscope.com and check out all of his amazing Zenoscope covers, as well as some metal cards, bookmarks, and lots more. And that'll wrap up this edition of Everything Zen. I'm your host, Mark Sells. Thank you so much for listening. William Shakespeare once wrote, April hath put a spirit of youth in everything. So be youthful, be kind, take time out to enjoy some art and the beauty in life. We'll see you all again next time right here on Everything Zen.